so you can play. Matthew here from MiniWarGaming.com and welcome to another story time for the Storms of Ixia 40k narrative campaign. In our last missions, which you may or may not have watched, if you haven't watched them, I strongly suggest that you go back and do so, we saw a couple things happen. First off, Captain Wizen and Commissar Khrushchev were trying to establish their communications array so that they could start scouting out the area and find safe landing zones. The problem with Ixia is that it's a lush jungle world. And not just a lush jungle world, but a jungle world that's been twisted a bit by the warp because of all these warp storms. And so you can't just start dropping down heavy armor and all these big vehicles and lots of troop carriers when there's really nowhere for them to land. So it could be very dangerous that way. And there's also a lot of orc territory and Tyranna territory, so they can't drop in the middle of that either. So they attempted to set up a communications array, which they managed to get up initially, but shortly after that, war boss Gruffnod, with his big mech Gratchaka, brought in a disruption device to disrupt their communications while they would raid and try to kill the Imperial Guards so they could take over the communications array and then use it to send false coordinates, which he would then use to send the Imperial Guard into his rival. Bug Squisha. He's, right now, he's technically is in charge of him. He's his second in command, and he doesn't like that. He really doesn't like Bug Squisha. Well, in that mission, the Imperial Guard held as hard as they could. They killed a lot of orcs, but the orcs managed to overrun them just enough. Commissar Khrushchev went down, and he got minor wounds, and so he was dragged away, and he was, he was able to be healed. Captain Wizen escaped without any wounds, as he was at the back with his command platoon, of course. And, uh, and they had to retreat as war boss Grefnod got in there. Thankfully, lucky to, with, a, with just a lucky bit of a Vox communication back to the frigate through the disruption device, they managed to send down a huge ordnance shot from the frigate, which managed to hit the big mech right down the middle and exploded him and nearby orcs. So uh, Grotchaka was destroyed, which really made a big difference because Grotchaka was the brains behind this idea. He was the one that was going to reconfigure the communications array and had the know-how of how to do that. And so Grufnod was left to himself in a few minor mechs, ones that you know, didn't have the same experience. And so they started tinkering at the communications array, and but they just weren't able to fulfill the plan as well as the big mech could have done if he was still alive. So they still managed to divert all sorts of Imperial Guard reinforcements, not all of them, from the frigate because the frigate kind of, the, the command crew of the frigate kind of realized something was up as they started plotting all the different places that they were sending reinforcements and realized it seemed almost like a random pattern. And when they couldn't reestablish communication back with Captain Wizen, when they, they were getting false Vox communications, they decided just to cut it off until they could figure out what was going on. And so Grefnod did not succeed in sending Imperial Guard on top of Bug Squish's forces, but he did manage to scatter a lot of the, the Imperial Guard reinforcements all over the continent of Ixia. In the meantime, Bug Squisha was coming down to reinforce Grefnod to make this assault against the Imperial Guard and just try to destroy them and grab their vehicle so they could go back to the frigate and try to take it over. And he was so upset. He was angry, angry, angry Bug Squisha because Grefnod abandoned Foundry Primaris. And so the Tyranids were moving into Foundry Primaris and that was a stronghold of the orcs with all the weaponry and all the, the, the tech stuff that they could use. And so a com combination of wanting Foundry Primaris and his hatred of the Tyranids caused Bug Squisha to divert his, his elite forces. He didn't have the mob of, of boys that Grefnod had at his disposal. He had more of an elite force after those Tyranids. Well, as he went in, he faced off against a winged hive tyrant and a huge force of Tyranids, and both sides just destroyed each other to almost nothing. Bug Squisha got overrun by a bunch of Hormigants, and he received major wounds. He was horribly wounded as he was able to limp away from the fight. The winged hive tyrant did go down, but he didn't really get wounded because of the fight. All that happened was that they shot at him and it hit some nearby crates which toppled on top of him and he was incapacitated for the rest of the fight, but was able to come out of it unharmed. But pretty much every single Tyranid and every single Orc was killed or scattered, except at the end there was one Moloch left who just tumbled himself back into the, into the earth, 
and there was a Morkonaut that was alive. Now this Morkonaut was a hero. He was full, he had, he had big mech Blitzadaka inside of him. He was piloting him around and he had all these grots and other big mechs with mech tools that were patching him up and every time he took any damage, like a Trigon reared up and just slammed into it and tore off a bit of his armor plate and immediately a grot stuck its head out with a new plate and stuck it on and welded it on before the, tyrann, uh, the Trigon had even any chance to rip at it more. It lost so much of its armor and just kept getting patched up and kept getting shaken and then patched up again that even by the end you couldn't tell the difference. It didn't even look like the Morkonaut was even damaged. Of course, it's hard to tell when orc contraptions get damaged because they're just a bunch of armor plates bolted together and it's really hard to tell where something is new and something is old and something is damaged and something is repaired. It's, it's really hard, but you really couldn't tell. At the end, it didn't even look like the Morkonaut was scratched. Even though he took attacks on Trigons and Molochs and Raveners, just trying to, to destroy it. And so it eventually was the victor. Now, uh, the Blitzadaka, the big mech who was piloting the Morkonaut, kind of, he saw an opportunity here, because normally he was restricted as to what he could loot from Foundry Primaris because of Gruffnod and big mech Grotchaka, who was who just thought he was all full of himself. And now he was all of a sudden by himself with just a small group of orcs as Bug Squisha retreated off into the jungles calling for reinforcements. He would never admit to needing to be rescued. And so he just called for uh, an escort to help him get back to more of his troops so that he could mount another assault against the Tyranids. But he was limping off and all of a sudden Big Mac Blitzadaka is left in the Foundry Primaris and he's like, ah! Oh! He's like a kid in a candy shop. And so he just starts looting stuff and he attracts more Big Macs and he attracts Ludas and nearby orcs who start to just come and join him. And they just start to pull apart as much as they can and, uh, and loot even more of the Foundry Primaris than already was looted. And just, they're just having a field day. So in the meantime, Captain Wisen, who's been pulled back, he had to retreat away from their, their initial position, was trying to figure out what to do. Now he had the initial scan reports that the frigate Racia had done on Ixia. The problem is it just wasn't super detailed because their scanners are mostly down because their the power on the frigate, of course, is not up, which is why they need to get to the foundry and they need to get to the parts to repair the frigate. And so he backs up and he starts to look over his data slates and tries to find what he can do. And he realizes that at Foundry Primaris, that uh, there, you know, Foundry Primaris is huge. It's the size of a small city. And so there's one part of it on the southern end, which is the part that they're facing, so it's nice and, you know, that's nice that they can, don't have to go too far into it, that actually has facilities where they can go in and they can actually boost their Vox communications and reestablish connection with the frigate. Because right now, there's no communication whatsoever. They're just not able to communicate with the frigate without the communications array that they had built because their Vox casters don't have the range and the frigate has too little power to actually be able to establish this communication. So he, his plan is to take the remainder of the regiments that he has, which is a small force, and infiltrate into the foundry. And he has to infiltrate because he doesn't want to have a full confrontation with a huge orc warband, obviously. And if he can infiltrate in there and get into a place, because it's a huge place, there's no way the orcs are covering every square inch of that and get in there, reestablish communications, then he could call for reinforcements and give them better coordinates to send down, and then he could mount an assault. And hey, then he'd be right by Foundry Primaris anyways. So it's a bit of a risk because it means he has to tra traverse these jungles which are infested with orcs and tyranids and other things as the jungles themselves are nasty and lash out and, and kill some of his guys. And he does that. He, it's a, it's, he's slogging through with bugs the size of hormigants just fly, flying down from things and carrying off some of his men and some of them succumb to, they, they see like what looks like a piece of fruit and all of a sudden it explodes and spews acid all over them. And, and, but he's, he's doing it. He's just slogging through this as much as he can. And, um, and, and on his way there, he finds out that he comes into Vox range of some Imperial Guard regiments, which he's confused by. And he finds out that they had come down because of his orders or his, his relays, and he realized that the orcs, what were they, they were doing, and uh, that they, they had taken hijacked the communications array. Now he could see what their plan was, and it was to divert the Imperial Guard reinforcements or whatever they're going to do with them. But it was working, at least to some degree, at least from what he could see. So he comes across some of these. Some of, the re some of them had been attacked by orcs, but managed to hold their position. Other ones were completely wiped out. And so he did manage to gather more of a force as he goes there. And one of the things that he manages to gather is a Freeblade. One of the three Freeblade Knights came down to one of the positions that he thought he was supposed to go to and he was going to assist in, in helping to, to take the foundry. And uh, he was just wandering in the jungle. Had managed to kill a bunch of orcs by himself. This is Apius. So this is the, the third Freeblade, Apius, Licinius. 
and he was wandering around looking, and he had managed to find a few Imperial Guard uh, survivors as well, and so they met up with Captain Wizen. And so he's he managed to cobble together some remainders of some regiments. We've got the free blade, and he even comes across some armor because uh, they managed to drop some tanks. Now, a lot of the tanks were destroyed in the drop, but some of them were repairable or at least salvageable. And so he's able to gather this kind of cobbled up force that was doesn't follow the normal regiments of the Imperial Guard because it's just a remainder of so many different things. And they get to Foundry Primaris and he sends in a scout force and he finds, surprisingly, that the Foundry Primaris is mostly uncontested. The, there seems to have been a recent battle there. There's dead Tyranids and dead orcs everywhere. And he can see that there's this Morkinod and a bunch of big mechs and loot is going around and looting the place. But other than that, his force actually is large enough that he could take on this small force of orcs. And so he, takes, he, he, he seizes the initiative here and sees that this is the chance that we have. And so he actually musters his forces and enters Foundry Primaris and goes for a direct assault against the Morkinod's forces. Because if he can overwhelm them, then he can not only get the, the communications array, there's also even a sensor array that is present there, and he could use it to do scans to find the other Imperial Guard. But then he's also in Foundry Primaris, so he can start his primary objective, which was to find if there's the right parts in Foundry Primaris, and we get them back up to the frigate so that repairs can be made. And so that is what he is going to do. And so this brings us to the two missions for today, which of course are available at the links in the video description below. Mission 2A is going to be the Winged Hive Tyrant's Assault Force going after War Boss Bug Squisher. So that's going to be a smaller game, about a thousand points. It's a custom scenario and um, it's going to be very exciting as he does it under the cover of night and the jungles are going crazy and uh, the, the warp storms are all around and Bug Squish is trying to get away. He's got a few mega knobs with him who are able to, the knobs who survived with him are able to put on some of their bigger armor and they're moving back and then the reinforcements are coming but they're not yet there so Bug Squish is kind of surrounded on all sides by the Tyranids as he tries to get away and on top of that the Tyranids have a new adaptive poison specifically made for Bug Squisha. So if he dies in that mission, then he's dead. There's no rolling on the table. It's an automatic six. He's automatically dead. And we'll see what happens there. So you can click the link for mission 2A in the video description below. And then mission 2B is going to be the assault that Captain Wizen does with his reinforcements on Foundry Primaris and attacking the Morkinauts, or Blitzadok is Morkinaut and his forces. And this one will have a free blade in it, so it'll have an Imperial Knight, Apius Licinius, joining the battle. That'll be mission 2B, which is available at the link below, and it will be at the, in the vault, of course. If you're not a vault member, you can still click it, and you can sign up for a free seven-day trial where you get full access to everything. You get instant access to this mission, plus mission 1B, plus all the other thousands of videos in there, the battle reports, painted tutorials, and everything else. The vault is what allows us to do all this. So if you are a vault member, thank you very much. You are supporting us and allowing us to do these narrative campaigns and battle reports and everything else that we do. If you're not a vault member, I, I invite you now to try it out. Most people who try it out don't cancel because they find out, hey, there's actually this, all this stuff in here that we just love to watch. So, missions below, 2A and 2B. Stay tuned on Tuesday for a bonus story time that'll give you even more details of what is going on. And happy wargaming.